Welcome back to Ben's Episto channel. Uh, right now I'm going to be describing how I do water changes. I'm not actually going to do a water change in this video. I'm just going to be describing how I do it and why I do it the way I do it. Uh, there seems to be a lot of different ways to do a water change and it seems like most of the fish survive uh, everybody's water changes and that there are different myth methods and rituals. So. I don't want to be bashing anybody's different uh, methods or anything. This is just my method. Uh, if you have a different way of doing it, throw it down in the comments. Tell me why. Uh, this is all learning experience for everybody, so uh, maybe I'll learn something. Maybe you'll learn something from uh, watching this video. Who knows? This is a great learning community here on YouTube, so uh, everybody's information is always accepted and wanted by me. So. Anyways, uh, this is how I do mine. Uh, I lower the water level uh, a couple days before I'm going to do my water change. I lower it uh, 25 to 40 percent. And the reason I do that is I'm trying to breed these guys and uh, changing water. And water seems to be a uh, trigger for these guys to breed. Uh, these are dwarf cichlids from South America and their breeding time seems to be in the rainy season. Uh, the beginning of the rainy season, the water level is low, so I'm trying to match the low water levels that they would see in the rainy season. Uh, lowering the water level also lowers the pH in my situation because I've got a lot of degrading plants and uh, less volume of water and the same amount of degrading plant matter uh, like that. Uh, these leaves that are in the aquarium right there and I've also got some peat soil, uh, some shrimp soil that's made out of peat granules that uh, slowly decomposes and degrades and lowers the pH in your aquarium. Uh, so it lowers the pH slowly over that couple of days. And then what I do is I have room temperature, RO water. I have my tank set to about six or 76 degrees, 77 degrees. Uh, with my heaters and I'll add room temperature RO water slowly to the tank and fill it up. And basically what RO water does in this situation is it keeps my pH low. Uh, the RO water has a pH of 7 so it keeps my pH low and at the same time uh, mimics rainwater uh, because the rainwater is obviously a uh, cooler temperature than the tank or wh what uh, water they would be sitting in in the wild and it doesn't harm them at all. Uh, there are temperature fluctu fluctuations uh, because of rains or winds or uh, runoffs or whatever uh, in lakes and tributaries and streams across the world and fish survive through it so uh, there's actually no problem with adding a little bit cooler water into your aquarium obviously you don't want to be adding ice cold water uh, but a temperature variance of a couple degrees usually doesn't matter so what I do at that point is I'll set my thermometers just a little bit cooler to about 75 degrees and I'll keep it like that for a few days and it seems to really encourage spawning I see or at least spawning uh, behavior, breeding behavior. Uh, I see a lot more action uh, in between the males and the females. Uh, since I've started doing that, uh, these guys on the right, the Epistogramma cockatoides, they absolutely go crazy uh, for breeding. And uh, the female is definitely a lot more energized and uh, interested in breeding and interested in the male uh, since I started doing these techniques. So. Uh, if you have South American cichlids of probably any variety, I'm guessing this would help. I've seen this trick done, or this method done, in uh, tanks with uh, larger South American cichlids. And it seems to work for them. You know, what works for me might not work for you. Uh, but this is a pretty, pretty widely known trick in the uh, dwarf cichlid community. So. I'm not too worried about my fish. They actually seem to like to swim in the cooler water. Uh, Sean Armand Trout, which is uh, another, I guess, YouTube famous or cichlid famous or uh, aquarium famous guy uh, out here in Washington State, uh, USA, uh, he really touts the uh, cooler water, water changes uh, for those reasons. And also the uh, last reason I guess I'm going to give 
is uh, a lot of people try to match their tank temperature uh, because they don't want to stress out their fish and all that other stuff. And uh, think about where that water is coming from. That hot water is coming from your hot water heater. Uh, hot water heaters are known to contain a lot of metals uh, and contaminants that you might not get from your local water source, which is uh, just pure and filtered and you know it might have some minerals and it might have a high KHGH uh, rating, but you know basically uh, when you're adding that, to what's already in your hot water heater uh, and it's just been known to contain a lot of metals if that's not filtered after your hot water heater then you're just getting all of those metals uh, when i was a cook in training several several years ago over 10 years ago i was taught to always start with cold water uh, because that would uh, that would lessen the likelihood that our customers were ingesting uh, metals basically from our hot water heater so think about your hot water heater think about where your hot water is coming from or your warm water is coming from it's obviously needed to be heated a little bit to get to the temperature of your tank water uh, and uh, I definitely wouldn't be using any hot water uh, if you aren't using RO water not everybody can afford it or wants to do it uh, I just start out with some room temperature water and slowly add it to your aquarium. Your fish aren't going to hate you for it. Uh, they're actually going to love you for it. And uh, all those heavy metals, they can uh, shorten the lifespan of your fish. So, you know, Sean Armantrout, he has been keeping monster cichlids alive for several, several years. And he touts this. I tout this, um, this method. Uh, don't use hot water or warm water in your water changes. Uh, if you have a difference of opinion, you know, tell me why. Uh, if you uh, don't like this video, you know, tell me why. Tell me what's up. Uh, don't just uh, hate on it and, uh, and leave. So, you know, tell me what's up and uh, maybe I can learn something from you. So, anyways, thank you for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and y'all have a good day.